Hey guys, so recently we did a live stream where all of you guys were voting on which moves to play in a game against Mittens, the one rated cat bot, which is actually beating everyone. So I'm going to go over that game, talk about the moves that were voted, why they were voted, what ultimately happened in the game. And of course, if you want to see that video, like I said, I'll link it down in the description. You can check that out if you want to see the whole live stream. All right, let's get started. All right, so we were white, everybody voted for e4, we went into a Sicilian, and then I convinced everybody to play bishop to b5, I think. Close second was d4, um, but we our reasoning was against a computer, you want to kind of go for closed positions a lot of the times. If you start opening things up, it gets very tactical, computers don't make mistakes, and so it's better a lot of times to, to go for the closed positions. So Mittens played knight to f6. A line that I'm not super familiar with, we pushed e5, which I believe is, is a good solid move. And then knight to d5, we castled, and knight to c7, attacking our bishop. So here we talked about two options, simply trading the knight uh, for the bishop immediately or defending it with the pawn. We decided to go with a4. Uh, the point is that if you know knight takes, we take here, we get an attack on the knight, and we open up the rook and our rook gets active right away. So that was kind of the idea. Mittens decided to not take it and go knight to e6, which is actually a bit of an inaccuracy. And one thing I noticed was that Mittens was not playing the best moves early on, as we see here. Okay, so according to the engine, best move was g6, and uh, this move actually gives white a slight advantage. Okay, so we played the move c3 here. And our reasoning was we really wanted to shut down the knights, and you can see that this move accomplishes that. The knights can't really jump in anymore to all of these squares because we have c c3, and also we're pre preparing to play d4, get control of the center, let our bishop out, and so I think c3 was a very nice move. a6, we decided to trade the bishop, and here, one option, uh, which actually the engine doesn't really like it, so I guess it wasn't really a, a mistake, but I was thinking the move a5 would make a lot of sense here. And we ultimately played d4 any, instead, uh, just to continue with our development and get the center, which the computer does like. But I do want to point this out. The point behind a5 is that it locks in this pawn, which locks in black's bishop. And notice the bishop doesn't have a lot of options. It can go to b7, but that seems kind of not very good. The queen also can't really come out. The rook is defending it. The pawn is controlling this square. So it really kind of shuts down on, on black's pieces. And I think from a human standpoint, this is a really annoying move. Black has to figure out you know, how to make progress. Um, and maybe we can actually use this square if we can get a knight in there at some point. So we can push this and our knight could very easily hop in there. It could be very, very powerful. So I just wanted to point that out, but d4 was, you know, according to the engine, the best move. All right, now Mittens plays a5 before we can get a chance to do that, opens up this diagonal for the bishop, and you're gonna see what happens. So we played rook to e1, bishop to a6, bishop to e3, just developing, rook to b8. Again, you can see not the top move here, and so I did notice this, like I mentioned, Mittens was playing like the second best move, quite a bit in this early phase of the game. So best move here was C takes D4. Instead, Mittens went for the second choice, Rook to B8. All right, so we voted for Queen to C2 to defend the pawn this way. And it's interesting. Notice the computer showing the move Knight B to D2. I want to point this out. It actually says ignoring this pawn completely was a good idea. And the point was that uh, it wanted us to play Knight to E4, threatening to take here. And just to give you an example, after something like Queen to B6, it was giving this line takes, takes, and the queen moves somewhere, and we play queen to d4, and even though it looks kind of like black has sort of invaded along the b-file, what's going on here is that black has not developed this bishop, can't castle, and doesn't really have a good way to do that. You don't want to play g6, because then probably a move like e6 is just completely crushing. You've got this, you've got this, and Mittens is going to lose. And then you can't really play d6 to try to open up the center because that's bad for the king. And so you would have to play a move like e6, trying to keep things closed off and activate the bishop this way. But then we bring the rook over and black is going on the defensive. Queen to d5, takes, takes. And after rook to b1, let's just say we get a trade. Notice black never really developed. And now they're, they're kind of running out of time. We have a big threat here if they try to play bishop e7. And so really interesting line. A lot to see, right, to be able to just give up a pawn. But uh, I thought that that was interesting and I wanted to point that out to you guys. But in the game, uh, the human, you know, move definitely was to defend the pawn. So we played queen to c2. Queen to b6. Again, you see Mittens going for the second choice move uh, and not playing the best move. 
queen to b6 lining up on the pawn again so we decided to play the move knight to a3 now this was very interesting and somebody pointed this out in the chat but if black were to take here we have a really nice move if you'd like to pause if you haven't seen this already what's the best move here for white all right well if you had a chance to to do that the move is rook a to b1 and the point is black can't get away with the queen trade because ideally black would like to trade queens and maybe trade rooks or move the rook but as soon as they take our queen we're taking here with check black's going to be forced to block now we take our queen back and we just won the rook right and so black's actually in trouble at this point because if you move the queen anywhere you're losing that if you don't move the queen we're taking the queen it's, it's just bad news for black right so really nice idea to play knight to a3 and not defend the pawn. However, the issue with that is that black doesn't have to take it, and after they just simply take here, black actually is, is in a pretty equal position. All right, so the game goes on, queen to b3. We play queen to c3, putting some pressure on the pawn. We get the trade, and mittens plays f5. Now, in the live stream, I mistakenly captured on Passant because I couldn't read at that moment. Uh, people voted to not capture, and I just misread the, the vote. Anyway, we fixed it, and the game went on, and we decided to play rook a to b1. Good move, gets control of the file, right? There's only one open file on the board at this moment. It's the b file. Black currently had it, but now we are fighting for it because we have both rooks involved. So this is a good move. He traded. He, she, I don't know. Uh, Mittens traded and played the move f4. Here we go. Back to d2. The bishop comes in. And here it started to get pretty tricky, and we started to kind of misstep. The engine said the best thing to do was just deal with this threat by, by bringing the knight back. Just get away from the bishop, keep our pawn structure nice and solid, and we're actually just better. We're fine here. Everything is really solid. Our rook is still ready to come in now that we've kind of dealt with the threat. Instead, we decided to throw in the check first and then play c4. And our point was we're going for this pawn. Which looks like it makes sense. We want to take the pawn, move our bishop, push this, and get a queen. However, by doing this, we allow this series of trades, which gives black this really nice centralized knight. And here's a really important learning opportunity. Before we played the move c4, this knight wasn't doing a whole lot, right? Like it couldn't really go here, it couldn't really go here. It's just kind of sitting there. As soon as we go for this idea, takes takes now the knight comes in and now this knight is very dangerous we have to be really careful about what we're, we're doing and we didn't have to allow that now the engine says this was the best line still but from a human standpoint i think this makes it the game very difficult for us and we started to go wrong again here everybody voted for king to g2 to defend the pawn thinking that we could just take this later whenever we wanted however we actually needed to take it right now this was one of the critical moments in the game if we were to capture this right now we're actually doing better because if black goes for this we simply play king to g2 yes they can throw in a random check if they want but that doesn't really do anything we just keep moving our king and now the knight's off on the other side of the board and look at look at this pawn this is very, very dangerous for black. And I don't know how black's going to stop that, right? We're going to move our bishop, and we're going to start pushing this guy down. And I think black's probably in trouble if we would have went for this line. So that's what we should have done. However, by playing king to g2 first, it allowed mittens to go back and jump over to c5, which I think is what we missed. I know I missed it when I was looking at the game. And so we take, but now knight c5 comes, and look at our pawn here. We can't defend it. Now you might be thinking, wait a minute, can't you play rook to b4? And that's what people voted. And it looks like we are defending it. However, the problem with rook to b4 is that black plays e6. And look at this. We just stepped into a discovered attack. And so now we kind of have to, you know, deal with that. And so we decided to just move the rook again. But we wasted a move, basically, right? That was a complete waste of time. And we ended up losing the pawn anyway. We allowed mittens to finish the development eventually. Not, not right away. But you're going to see that in just a second. So that was... Uh, a big part of the, the game there. And then bishop to b4, he captured here. c5, uh, not a bad idea. The, the point is that even though there's two pieces attacking it, mittens can't do this because the rook is hanging over here in the corner, right? So there's that. Rook to g8, there's no longer a pin. Now it's defended by the king. So we decided to play rook to a8. The knight came over here, rook to a7, and then knight to b5. Now, 
the computer shows it being a blunder, but it's not a blunder for the reason that you think it's a blunder. So it looks like, oh, we just lost our knight to the pawn, right? That's not why it's a blunder, because if Mittens would have done this, we have a really nice move here. If you'd like to pause, what can we play? Well, if you had a chance to look at that, the move is c6 check, and we're unleashing the bishop. The king has to move somewhere. Let's just say it goes over here, uh, and then we can... There's a couple of ways to play this. I guess the best is to capture here first and then go bishop to a5. And the point is we've got some serious threats of bringing the rook and the pawn down. And I guess there is ways that black can stop it. Bishop to e7 is one, rook to b7. The game goes on. King to f7, the rook's going to stop it. But very dangerous position, and the engine says it's better for us. Okay, so that was the point behind knight to b5. However, the problem is that... If black doesn't take it and does what Mittens did, knight to d3, now we're just in trouble. This guy's under attack, this guy's under attack soon, this guy's under attack, and everything is kind of falling apart, right? And so it was a nice flashy move, it just didn't quite work. We played knight to d6, again, setting a trap here, which probably some humans would have fallen for, uh, where now we can play rook to a8. And we actually have checkmate coming here, or at least black has to give up the rook uh, to survive, something like this, and then the game goes on. But um, Mittens wisely decided to just move the bishop, and we no longer, sorry, we no longer have the ability to bring the rook down because black is controlling that with the rook, okay? And now we're just dead lost. We played a few more moves, I believe. And right here, I believe we voted to resign the game. That was the first live stream that I ever had over a thousand people. So we will be doing this again, challenging Mittens again, I believe, or at least some of the other bots. Uh, I think it was a fun experience. You guys, you know, were able to vote and kind of participate. And so I had a lot of fun doing that. So stay on the lookout for the next live stream. I haven't figured out uh, a consistent schedule yet because life is pretty crazy, but hopefully at some point in the future, We'll get that figured out. Hope you guys enjoyed the recap, and I will see you next time. As always, stay sharp, play smart, and take care.